Um, I want to begin by acknowledging Deputy Sherlock for originally uh, proposing this amendment at committee stage. Uh, this redress scheme is a deeply insulting and disrespectful response to the unimaginable pain and suffering endured by thousands of people at the hands of the state and church. It's shameful and intentionally inadequate to respond to the scale and magnitude of state-sanctioned abuse, violence and injustices perpetuated against girls and women, the victims of rape and incest, disabled people and people of colour. While no amount of money can ever compensate the survivors, this is about recognition, about the state fully and completely owning up to its historic past. Instead, the government is clearly and loudly declaring that only the trauma of some survivors matter, that only some violations will be recognised. The mother and baby homes, institutions and county homes involved in criminality, extreme human rights violations and targeted abuse of some of the most vulnerable people in society. The government's bill intentionally excludes 40% of survivors, dismissing the trauma and pain of whole categories of people with arbitrary and cruel thresholds and zero understanding of trauma and transitional justice. Unfortunately, this amendment is the only way that we can legitimately raise the most egregious aspects of this so-called redress scheme. The substantial changes needed to remove the massive exclusions and denial of justice cannot be discussed. The government is using its money message as the expansion of the scheme would have a budgetary implication to prevent even the consideration of these essential matters. This scheme should include those who suffered forced family separation, people who were boarded out and people subjected to illegal medical trials. The survivors you consulted strongly advocated for the scheme to recognise all survivors. Numerous UN human rights officials also called for this and each of us have received hundreds of, female, of emails from ordinary Irish people on this matter. Yet despite all of that, the minister is determinedly and willfully telling up to 40% of survivors that their horrific experiences and breach of their human rights are not sufficient or valid to be acknowledged in the scheme. Compounding this issue, we cannot talk di directly about these issues today. I cannot pro propose an amendment for the scheme to include children who spent less than six months in a mother and baby home or a county home. I cannot propose an amendment that recognises the horrendous crimes of forced family separation or illegal adoptions. I cannot propose an amendment to ensure that the scheme covers the approximately 5,000 people who were boarded out as children. I cannot propose an amendment to acknowledge the children illegally experimented on by pharmaceutical companies facilitated by the state and religious orders. I cannot propose an amendment to provide redress for mixed race survivors who endured particular abuse and discrimination. The only relevant amendment that I can propose is to seek a report on the scheme after six months that would consider these fundamental flaws. I want to emphasise that again. After years of campaigning from survivors and their advocates, after evidence from human rights experts, after thousands of ordinary people have contacted us, the only thing that I and other opposition TDs can do today is ask you to consider a report. There are no words for how much this government has failed survivors and now the rules of the House are failing them. The number and categories of survivors being excluded from this scheme is deliberate. The Minister, the Government and senior officials in both the Department of Children and Public Expenditure and Reform are all aware of these issues. They know what the Oak Report's recommendations from survivors are. They know what UN bodies and officials have told us. They know what the Irish people want and they do not care. The denial of justice and disregard for survivors is startling. The Minister is directly responsible for crafting and leading this process, but every government backbencher and independents who quietly vote with them share culpability for this injustice. This amendment is the only instrument that we have to discuss any of these issues. It's a gesture, a last call for some decency. Anyone who's engaged with survivors recently or seen their posts on social media know that they are tired, know that ultimately the state will win. They've been worn down, so well done, Minister and the Department, it seems that was the, the goal from the beginning. I'm genuinely struggling to find the words to describe how wrong this is, 
to sum up how this redress scheme is more insulting than nothing, how this is just a new form of abuse. And I cannot even propose a meaningful amendment. There's an opportunity to show some sort of decorum and understanding and let this amendment pass. We know you'll ignore the report anyway, but perhaps it will give your successor a basis to bring in a new and proper redress scheme. At this stage, that's all I can hope for. A new government willing to stand up for survivors and to finally give them more than empty promises. Yeah. Yeah. Indicate, please. Captain Cairns. Thanks, Cahir. Look, um, Mr. Hepp today was quite incredible and somewhat excruciating to watch you speak for, well, not even the full seven minutes, but almost seven minutes and not actually reference the main concerns that were raised in the chamber and particularly the concerns raised by Deputy Boy Barrett and, and Deputy Connolly. Um, and I think you're right to highlight that this is one aspect of what's been going on in relation to mother and baby homes. And um, for the past three years on the Children's Committee chaired by Deputy Function, we've been working on the birth information tracing legislation also, like you said, and the burials bill. And in relation to the birth information tracing legislation, that was announced with such fanfare, people getting their information. That's a real basic entitlement that everybody else in the country already had. So it, it doesn't deserve any kind of a medal or anything like that. And people are actually waiting far longer than what was promised for their information. People are still getting in touch with all of us. They haven't gotten their information yet. So there's no kudos to you there, I don't think, for that. And then in relation to the Burials Act, we have a, a situation whereby you've legislated to just intervene at Tume, and that is so welcome. There needs to be intervention there. But we know that there's mass unmarked graves all over the country and you've legislated to not intervene there. Here we go again, the bare minimum, exclude people, a hierarchy, the same thing again. So I'm glad you highlighted it because it's important to give context to that. It's an absolute disgrace. Um, I do want to uh, re-emphasize the need to at the very least just give an explanation as to why you've excluded people who spent less than six months in institution. You carried out the Oak report, the findings of that report said highest thing that survivors reported back that they wanted the redress to be based on was that, what Deputy Barrett spoke, what Boyd Barrett spoke about, separation of mother and child, forced family separation. That was the main finding of your report. You ignored that and went much further down the list of things from, in terms of feedback and went with time spent in institution. Can you outline to the chamber and to the people in the gallery how on earth the department came to that conclusion. We still don't know. It was printed in the examiner yesterday that an FOI was submitted to the department to explain how that conclusion was come to. What did they get back? It was in the national interest for the department not to say how they came to that because it could upset a vulnerable group of people. You're basically saying, in, in order to, we're Thank not you. going to tell you why you've been shafted because it might upset you. The general public don't accept this treatment of survivors anymore. You, it's gone on for far too long. I don't think you quite realise how much people are against this. I agree with Deputy Sherlock. We won't see the end of this. It will be, there will be cases taken in court if you don't thank change you, your thank tack. You, Cairns. Is it Dr. Thank you, Minister. And uh, Deputy Cairns, one contribution on this amendment. Uh, just to say, Minister, it's completely disingenuous to say that that is the justification for this entire thing of excluding people who spent the less than six months in an institution, that, well, some people highlighted time spent in an institution as a thing to look into in terms of redress. It is completely disingenuous. You are completely and blatantly ignoring all of the concerns that have been raised in the House tonight, all of the concerns that have been raised with all of us by the general public, by just acting like you think it's the right thing to do. We all know that there is no explanation for it, that it is completely indefensible. That's why you consistently avoid answering the question why there is nobody sitting over there with you why nobody on the government side ever comes into these debates, because it is completely inexcusable. You commissioned a report, the findings were that the redress should be based on forced family separation. You ignored it and you went down the list and chose this and your reply is disingenuous. The other thing, as it's the last word on this report and all the other amendments we speak to are kind of technicalities and they're not the bigger broader picture. I genuinely thought when this six months criteria was put in, it was a red herring to distract all of us from the fact that actually the overall redress scheme offers such a low bar of payments. I thought this would definitely be scrapped, this six month thing. And that we'd all be talking today about the fact that you might get three or 5,000 euro for something like being separated from your parent or your child at, at birth. That you might get that for being incarcerated, for forced labor, 
for illegal adoptions, for all of the horrors, for illegal vaccine trials on children. And you might get three or 5,000 euro. I've said it before, and I'll say it again now. You would get more if you fell over a pavement. The entire thing is an absolute disgrace. And I hope it just is on the record for today. Thank you.